In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create these stylized hot dogs in Blender. So I'm going for a stylized look, so I'm going to be using Blender Eevee for the rendering engine. So this tutorial series is going to be split up into two parts. So in this part, in part one, we're going to be modeling the hot dog and the bun, and we'll be modeling the ketchup and mustard on top of the hot dog, and then we'll be modeling the seeds, which we'll be placing on the bun, and then we'll do the lighting. Then in part two, we're going to be UV unwrapping some of the objects, and then we'll do some some stylized texture painting to give a cool stylized look and some stylized colors and then we'll finish up the materials by adding a bit of subsurface scattering and a little bit of surface bump and then we'll also be using geometry nodes to place the seeds on the hot dog buns and then we'll render the scene and do some compositing and if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase the tutorial files you can get that on my gumroad store and my patreon page the links are in the description and also on my gumroad store and patreon page you can get access to lots of blender content like 3D models and assets, tutorial files, artwork project files, procedural materials, geometry node modifier setups, and lots more Blender content on my Gumroad store and Patreon page. So if you'd like to make a one-time purchase of one of my products, my Gumroad store is a great place to do that, or if you'd like to help support the channel monthly while getting access to lots of Blender content, then my Patreon page is a great place to do that. Now I wanted to upload these stylized hot dogs to Sketchfab so that I could preview them on my Sketchfab profile in my browser. Browser, and so to do that, I had to texture bake the models. Now Blender's default texture baking tools are a little bit hard to use, so I use this really great Blender add-on which makes texture baking so much quicker and easier to do. Auto Bake is a really great Blender add-on for easy texture baking. Select the object that you want to bake and then you can add any of the texture maps in the bake list. You can then change many of the settings like the name of the texture, the texture resolution, and where you want the add-on to export the textures. Then just hit the Auto Bake button and the add-on will automatically texture bake all the textures and save them as files on your computer. You can find my full add-on review video with the link in the description, and if you purchase the add-on through my affiliate link, you'll be helping to support this channel. Alright, so let's start by modeling the hot dog. So here I am in Blender, and I'll have my screencast keys right down here in the corner so you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So I'll select everything, and I'm just going to delete everything. So for the hot dog object, I'll go to the Add menu. Let's go to Mesh, and I'm going to add a cylinder. Right behind me on the Add Cylinder settings, I'm going to turn the vertices down just to a 12 because we don't need it that big. So we don't need that much geometry, so vertices of 12 will work just fine. And then I can close the Add Cylinder settings. Now the default objects in Blender are quite large and a hot dog is much smaller. So to model these objects to the real life scale in Blender, I'm going to scale this object down by 0.1, press Control A and apply the scale. Now that still might be a little bit large for a hot dog when modeling to the real life scale in Blender, but it's going to be a much better size. The average cube is a little bit higher than a human. So I'm just going to model this to a much smaller size. That'll be closer to the real life scale in Blender. Now let's rotate the hot dog and I'm going to rotate it on the Y axis by 90 degrees and then I'll press Control Control A and I'll just apply the scale. Let's now hit the tab key to go into edit mode and I can hold down the alt key and select that loop of vertices there on the side and I'll press 1 on the numpad to go to front view and I can just start to extrude this by hitting the E key extrude that out and you can hit the R key to rotate and extrude it out again kind of rotate it over a little bit so I want the hot dog to slightly move up on the edges so we'll extrude that out again rotate it and also on the edges it's gonna be scaled up a little bit so I'll scale it up a little bit just scale out the vertices there extrude that out again and then we can kind of scale it down a little bit extrude it out again and scale it way down that might be a little bit too long so I'll go to wireframe let's deselect everything and kind of move this back a little bit deselect everything just box select that there and move it back a little bit. All right, let's box select the other side and we'll extrude out the other side and rotate it and scale it. Make it a little bit bigger. Just have it slightly get larger on the end to kind of give it a stylized look. And then we'll scale it down, extrude it again and scale it down. Although I think it still is a little bit too long. So we can bring this in here and maybe this loop here, just scale it down a little bit because I want it to be pretty subtle. And over here on this side, I'll box select this side, bring it back just a little bit because I think it was a little bit too big. And that is a better size, so I'll go back to solid view, I'll go back to object mode, and I'll use the object context menu to shade it smooth. And then let's also press Control 2. Control 2 is going to add a subdivision surface over here on the side panel on the modifiers to smooth it out. But here on the subsurf settings, let's actually change the viewport and render both to 1. We don't need it to be at 2, 1 will just be fine. Let's save our project, so let's click on File and save our project. I'll just save this as hot dog 
dog.blend in a folder on my computer with my project files and just click on save as. And then as you're working on the project, just press control S to save. So let's now model the hot dog bun. So I'll just press shift C to make sure that the 3D cursor is in the center of the scene. And I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to add a cube. Now this object, as you can see, is quite large. So let's scale it down by 0.1, hit enter, press control A, and then apply the scale. So that's the object's new default size. So let's bring the bun over here so it's kind of on the side. And then I'll go into edit mode. And we can squish it down a little bit. So scale it down on the Y axis. And then we can scale it on the X axis to have it be the shape. And you could have it a little bit larger if you wanted to, or you could make it a little bit smaller so the ends of the hot dog kind of come out farther than the bun. I kind of like that. It kind of gives it a stylized look. We can also scale it up on the Z axis just a little bit. Let's go back to object mode and in object mode, I'll move it up just a little bit. Go back into edit mode, maybe scale it up a little bit more on the Z axis. Let's go back to object mode and I will press control two to add a subdivision surface with two levels. And I'll use the object context menu to shade the object smooth. Now it's super round right now. It's kind of an oval shape. So we need to add some loop cuts to sharpen it. So I'll go into edit mode and I'll press control R to add a loop cut and I'll scroll my mouse wheel until there are two loop cuts and then I will left click and right click so they stay in the center. And then I can scale all the loop cuts down or both of these in the middle, scale them down a little bit and also scale it down the Z axis just a little bit. So this way we're kind of getting a stylized look where the end of the hot dog kind of gets a little bit wider and then in the center of the hot dog bun, it's a little bit smaller. Let's also go here to the subdivision surface modifier on the modifier properties and I'll turn these both up to three so the edge is a little bit smoother. And then I want to sharpen up this side here because the bun is a bit more flat in the center and then it's more round on the side. So I'll press control R to add a loop cut and I can left click, drag this over here to sharpen up that edge. Don't bring it all the way over but just pretty close and then click to place that there. That's definitely more the shape of a hot dog bun. Let's select everything and I think everything needs to be scaled up a little bit and maybe scale everything up on the Z axis a little bit and we could scale it down on the Y axis. So once you have the hot dog bun to the shape that you want, I'm actually going to be applying the subdivision surface modifier because this object is super low poly. You can see how low poly it is and the subsurf modifier is really making the shape. So when we do the UV unwrapping and the texture painting, it's gonna be a lot better if we actually apply the modifier. So in object mode, we'll click on the drop down and click on apply to apply that. So now if we go into edit mode, you can see the geometry is much better. So we'll be able to better UV unwrap and texture paint it. And then after we are finished creating the entire hot dog bun, so after we've added the geometry nodes and done the texture painting and the materials, I'm going to duplicate it and make a second hot dog bun on the other side. And we'll kind of rotate them sideways so that the hot dog is kind of resting there in between the two hot dog buns. So let's now model the little swiggle of the ketchup and mustard. So I'll press shift C to make sure the 3D cursor is in the center of the scene. And I'll go to the add menu and let's add a plane. And I'll scale the plane way down so it's really small and bring it up on the Z axis. Just scale it down quite small like that and then I'll press control A and just apply the scale. So I'm going to go to top view and I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to click here to go to the edge select. And I'll select this edge and I'll rotate it and move it out a bit. And we're just going to extrude this out and make the swiggly ketchup and mustard. So an easy way to do this is to hold down the control key and then left click. So if you control left click and then just go all the way along here, that's going to basically extrude it out. And so let's go into wireframes. So we can actually see it. So we can just go along here and kind of move it around and extrude it. So it looks all swiggly. Now I use the right click select in blender. So I actually am going to control right click but you are probably using left click select so you're going to control left click so let's go along here and just make it really swiggly and then we can go here to the edge select select this edge rotate it and move it over and then again just hold down the control key and click to add the extrusion there you could also just hit e to extrude and then r to rotate if you want to but it's a lot faster to just control click all right, we can go back to the solid view. Let's select everything and we're going to bring it up on the Z axis a bit. And I actually want to scale it down a bit on the Y axis like that. Maybe make it a little bit smaller and let's move it over here. Something like that because it's a little bit too big. And then again, make sure you're on the edge select and you can select an edge and you can control click and just go back and forth just to kind of fix that. All right. And then if you want to, you can press control R to add some loop cuts and just add some loop cuts in some areas like here and there. And if you want to, you can on the edge select select an edge and kind of rotate it and move it around just to fix the shape of it. All right, so that is looking pretty good. So we'll go back to object mode. And so now what I want to do is shrink wrap this object onto the hot dog. So we'll click on add modifier. 
we're going to search for the shrink wrap modifier. On the target here, we're going to click on the eyedropper and choose the hot dog. So now you can see it's shrink wrapping down onto the hot dog. Now there's some issues here. You can see that it's like stretching and warping. So if you go back into edit mode, we want to select the entire mesh in edit mode and bring it down on the Z axis. And if it's closer, you can see if it's closer to the hot dog, it's not going to be quite as warped. So that was looking a bit better. You can also scale it down if you need to, if it's a little bit too large. Now you can't actually see it because it doesn't have any thickness now. It's going into the hot dog. So let's click on add modifier and we can search for a solidify modifier. And then I can drag this thickness value on the solidify and I need to bring it into a negative value so it brings it up. So now you can see it has some thickness and we'll use the object context menu and shade it smooth. Now it looks really low quality right now. It's really chunky. So then here at the end of the modifier stack, we'll also so click on add modifier and we're going to search for a subdivision surface to round it out. So we've added a subsurf here on the modifier stack so it's nice and round. And here on the subdivision surface modifier I'm going to turn the viewport and render levels both to 2. So now if you want to you can go back into edit mode, you can go into wireframe, and you can box select some of these areas here and kind of move it around if you want to fix the shape of it. And also you can see that the geometry isn't aligning up with the actual mesh and that's because we're using modifiers to change the geometry. So what you can do if you want to fix this and see it in the actual viewport is you can click on these button here, the on cage button. So you can click on that one there on the shrink wrap. You can also click on that one there on the solidify and then you can click on that one there on the subdivision. And this way now you can just select the geometry and you can move it around and it's going to adapt in real time. So that just looks a lot better. It's much easier. You can see sometimes it still warps a little bit so you might need to scale it up or move it around but this is just a much easier way to edit the mesh. I might want to box like this kind of rotate that over. Also I'm going to select the entire mesh in edit mode and I'm going to bring it over on the y-axis so it's over here on the side and then I'll go back to object mode and in object mode I will press shift D to duplicate it and bring this over this way. That way we can have two of them so one of them will be the ketchup and the other one will be the mustard. And then also one more thing that I wanted to do, if I select one of these, you can see it almost looks like it's floating a little bit. It's not really floating, but it's just really high up, and it would kind of make sense that it would kind of move down a little bit and be a bit more flat. So what we can do to fix that is to go here to the solidify modifier and on the offset here we can just drag this offset to bring it up and down. So I'm going to drag the offset down like this, just drag that so that it goes a little bit down kind of into the hot dog. So we'll select the other one and we can drag the offset just to kind of bring it down a little bit. All right and then here on the other one if I go into edit mode I can select some of the geometry here and kind of move it out because that part needs to be a bit thicker. You can also box select some of the areas and kind of rotate it so it looks slightly different from the other one because naturally if someone was pouring the ketchup and mustard on the hot dog it wouldn't be perfectly the same on both sides so just kind of moving this around rotate this one a little bit and also the offset is kind of pushing it down a little bit too far here on the end so I'm going to drag the offset up a little bit just to bring both of these up a little bit higher. All right so we'll save this again with Control S and we're now going to be modeling the little seeds so we're going to be modeling some sesame seeds and also a poppy seed and then later in the second part of the tutorial we'll be using geometry nodes to place them on the hot dog bun. So let's press shift C to center the 3D cursor. I'll go to the add menu and we'll add a cube and we're going to scale this cube way down so it's really small. Let's bring it over here and scale it down even small. So we'll go into edit mode and I'm going to scale it down on the Z axis to kind of flatten it and then I can also scale it down on the X axis like that. And go back to object mode and we're going to press control A and apply the scale. And then we'll go back into edit mode. And you can see if I zoom in, you can see that it's kind of clipping. So there is a way to fix this using the clipping options here on the inside panel. But a really quick and easy way to change this is to just hit the 5 on the numpad to go to the orthographic view. You can also just click here on view, and then you can change between perspective and orthographic. So go into orthographic view, and that way if you zoom in, it's still not going to clip it. So I'll scale this up on the Z axis because I think it was a little bit too small. And then I'll go to the face select. We'll select this face and I'll bring it back a bit and then I'll extrude the face, extrude it out and we can scale it down and scale it in on the x-axis and make it a bit smaller. All right we'll go back to object mode and I'll press Control 1 to add a subdivision surface with one level and I'll use the object context menu to shade it smooth and we'll turn the viewport and render both to 1. And I'll go into edit mode and scale it down a little bit more and then I can also go here to the back and go to the face select and just select this face and I'll scale it up a little bit so it's a bit longer 
just like that. So we can have a little sesame seed. And then let's apply this subdivision surface modifier. So I'll click on the drop down and click on apply. So now it is actual geometry. Now in edit mode, I also want to select the entire thing and I want to bring it over on the Y axis because I want the origin point to be about in the center there. So something like that. Let's go back to object mode now and I want to duplicate them and make a few of them. So there's a few of them and they look a little bit different. So I'll press shift D to duplicate this, bring it over. I can go into edit mode and I'll scale this down a bit and scale it down on the Y axis like that. And then in object mode, I'll duplicate this again go into edit mode and this one will scale down so it's really thin. So we have a big one, then we have a little bit thinner one and then an even thinner one. And then I also want to create a little poppy seed, which is going to be kind of a round little circle. So what I'll do is go to the add menu and I'll add another cube and the cube is quite large. So I'll scale it down really small and let's bring it over here close to the seeds and bring it over here to the side and I'll scale it down even smaller. So it's very, very small, maybe a little bit bigger. Something like that is pretty good. We can then press Control A and apply the scale. So that's the default size of the object. And then if I go into edit mode, I want to squish it down. So we'll scale it down on the Z axis. I'll go back to object mode and I can press Control 1 to add a subdivision surface with one level. And then let's just click on the drop down and apply that. So it is actual geometry now. And then I'll use the object context menu and shade it smooth. All right, so we have the three sesame seeds and we also have the poppy seed. So what I wanna do is put these into their own collection so we can use them later with the geometry nodes. So I'll click and drag to box select all the seeds. We'll press the M key so we can move them into a new collection. We'll click on new collection and I can just rename this to seeds and click on OK. So here in the outliner, we now have a seeds collection with all the seeds. So let's zoom out here and I'll hit the five on the numpad to go out of the orthographic view. So we're almost done with this part, but I want to do some lighting. And then in the next part, we'll be doing the texture painting and the materials and setting up the scene. So let's click over here to go to the render properties. And here on the render engine, I'm going to use Blender Eevee because I'm going for a stylized look. So Eevee will be great for that. And then also let's turn on the ambient occlusion and also the screen space reflections. Those are important to make Eevee look a little bit more realistic. And if you want to, you can hold down the Z button and go into the rendered viewport mode, but we don't really have a light right now. Let's also scroll down here and we can open up the color management and on this view transform here, I'm going to use the view transform of filmic. And then on the look here, I'll change this to very high contrast to pop out the colors and make things look more saturated. And I also want to use a transparent background. So if you open up this film tab right here, you can check mark the transparent button. So the background is transparent and then we'll be rendering the scene and adding a simple background in the compositing. Now I also want to add some HDRI lighting as well as a sunlight. So let's go to the add menu and I'm going to go here to light and I can add a sunlight and I'll rotate the sunlight over. I'll bring the sunlight up here, kind of rotate it down a little bit, something like that. And then if you click here to go to the object data properties of the light, I'm just going to turn the strength up to like a four. So it's a bit stronger. So this way we have a main light source, but the lighting really doesn't look good right now because it's very gray. And so I want to add an HDRI in the background to add some realistic lighting and reflections. So let's click over here on the world properties and right here on the color on the yellow dot here, I'll click on this and I'll choose environment texture. And then I'm going to click on the open button and I'll open up an HDRI. And this is the HDRI that I'm going to be using. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. The link will be in the description if you'd like to download it. It is the Aerodynamics Workshop HDRI, and I downloaded the 1K version and the HDR version on Polyhaven. So once you download the HDRI, you can go to wherever you have it and you can select it and click on open image. So you can already see the lighting looks a lot nicer. You can kind of see there's some like red kind of reflections and it's quite a bit brighter and the lighting looks a lot nicer. So let's save the project again by pressing Control S, and this will wrap it up for this part of the tutorial. So I hope you're enjoying this so far, and thank you for watching. And in the next part, we're going to be UV unwrapping the objects, we'll do the texture painting and the materials, and then we'll set up the scene. We're also going to use geometry nodes to place the seeds on the bun, and then render the scene and do some compositing. So when the next part is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen, and I'll have the link in the video description. And you can also help support the channel by purchasing the finished project files on my Gumroad store and Patreon page, so if you're interested in purchasing the project files, the links will be in the description. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.